Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is Nicholas Merton and today we are on part five of my series on SQL and data analytics for beginners. Guys, I'm excited you're here with me today because we're gonna be talking about something that's extremely important to understand in SQL and that is functions. Okay, no, I don't, I don't mean to scare you there. Don't worry, we're not doing any big math at all whatsoever. Uh, we're just gonna be talking about the five basic functions that I really think you should understand if you're getting into the beginner level of SQL. And there's a multitude of other functions that you should understand uh, and that we've already previously covered. So uh, what are these functions and what can they do for us? Well, I'm gonna be specifying uh, kind of two categories of functions and in each category, uh, they have their respective functions. And the first one, uh, I wanna teach you guys the count, the average and the sum function. And in the other category, I'm gonna talk about the minimum and maximum functions. Now you might already understand, you know, what these are entailing to and what they're gonna do. However, I'm gonna give us some practical scenarios where we can apply um, these functions and really get useful information out of it. So let's not hesitate any longer, guys, and jump right into it. So first off, uh, we're gonna delete our um, syntax on the screen and our query tool. And I also wanna reiterate real quick that if uh, you guys are curious about the data you need, it's the exact same from the last episode. So if you haven't changed anything, we're good to go. All right, so in this case scenario, we're gonna try and use the count function. And let's say, for example, we wanted to get not a list of the companies we work with, but a specific row that entails the amount of companies we work with on the distribution side. So literally just an integer. Well, how do we do that? Well, we can use uh, our normal select statement. And then before specifying the column, which in this case is distributor name, uh, we want to put our function first. So in this case, we're using a count function. And then next to it, you're going to put the column you want in commas, or sorry, commas, uh, parentheses. So in this case, uh, we want dis underscore name. And then we're gonna specify what table we want, which is dis underscore channels. And as we go ahead and run that, it gives us our count. So that's the count of total distributors we work with. So it's just an easy way to get a specific number we want uh, or a count of something without having to scroll through our database and uh, go through the tables and try to find all the specific information we're looking for. So saves us a lot of time and gets specific information like I was stating before. So the next thing I'm gonna be talking about is the average function. So let's say for example, uh, we're looking at our unit sold and we're saying, you know, we got all these different numbers uh, in our unit sold. Sometimes we have smaller clients, sometimes we have larger. You know, what's the average amount of units we sell uh, in any given order? So here's where we can use the average function for a very, uh, uh, finding a very useful number like the average amount of units sold. Basically, just like how we did the count function, we have to select and then put our function. In this case, average is spelled out AVG within the uh, PostgreSQL syntax. And then next to it, just like we did in the previous, we're gonna put our column name. And in this case, we're doing units underscore sold. And then we're gonna select our table, which in this case is refinery underscore clients. We go ahead and run that. Uh, and the, uh, the uh, PG admin tool, it's going to generate a smaller table. We just gotta simply stretch out the table here and then we get our full number. So it basically it's stating that the average amount of units sold in a given order is 16,683.3 repeating. So that's an awesome statistic. We know that we're selling 16, 000, over, well over 16,000 barrels uh, per refinery sale. So I mean, that's pretty good, that's a, that's a good amount of oil. So. Now moving on from there, how could we utilize the sum function? Well, what if we wanted to just get all of the units we sold this year? Let's say, we, for example, all the information we have plugged in here is the information for the year 2017, and we're trying to get our financial report in and you know get a number of how many units we sold in total. Um, well, that's where we can use the sum function. So we're not gonna delete any of the uh, syntax we typed other than the average function, and we're gonna replace that with the sum function. So basically, uh, we can run that query, and it should give us the total amount of units we sold out of all of our sales, which is 100,100 units. So that's a pretty good amount for one year too. We sold a lot of oil in general. Um, and this is how you can use the count average and sum functions in uh, very simple ways. However, we can get very specific with it. And I wanna do that in this case scenario here. Let's say for example, uh, we wanted to get uh, our, our total units sold that were true, meaning that on the status uh, sent, they were actually confirmed orders, rather than just being a false order that didn't go through or got rejected, or one that's in the process of it. We wanna get the actual numbers. Well, what we can do is, much like in the previous episode where we used our select statements, we were using the where clause a lot, and we can use that in this still. So in this case, we're gonna use the where clause and we're gonna specify where you, uh, sorry, not units sold, where status underscore sent. 
equals true. So basically what this is saying is that the only, um, the sum overall, we want the sum of all of the uh, units sold where uh, the status sent is true on the row. So let's go ahead and run that. And there we go. So our number got cut down a lot because we have a lot of orders that either, one that got rejected, I think, and then also two of them that were left blank. So in this case, we have all of them that equal a true confirmed sold order. So that means they've been sent and it's not a problem for us anymore. We've cashed out. So 32,000 units, not bad. So now from here on out, we're going to be talking about two last functions that I want you guys to understand, which is the minimum and max function. So how can we utilize these? Well, let's say, for example, we wanted to find uh, our largest order uh, by unit sold. So how are we going to do this? Well, we'll go to our select statement. And much like any other function that we've used so far, we're going to type in, in this case, let's find the, uh, the, the smallest uh, order we've done. We're going to use the min, uh, minimum function. And it's literally just typed out min like this. And then in parentheses, you want to type what column you want. We're doing units sold. And then we're going to type how much table we want, which is refinery underscore clients. Okay. If we run that, it gives us a nice clean row of the smallest order we have. I think this was the mom and pop refinery we've created that was really small compared to the other ones. Um, so yeah, we get exactly what that is. And um, we know what our smallest order is now. And then we can also now, like I said too, we can use the where clause in this as well, and we could specify what's the smallest one that has been a, a confirmed order, um, rather than just all of our orders in general. And then the max function works much like the same, so much like how I did with the uh, average to sum function, uh, we're just going to go ahead and replace this with max, which is the maximum. And as you guys probably can already know and predict, it's going to be fifty thousand. It's our largest order. So this is, like I said, the bare bones way of how you guys can use functions. You can get very specific with it. You can use the where clause to be a little more specific, uh, specific about your want. And um, yeah, there's a lot of cool ways that you can use these functions. And these are probably the essential ones you have to understand if you really want to start working with uh, tables and databases. So anyways, guys, that's it for the video. Um, in the next few videos, we'll be covering a little bit about the SQL syntax and going over uh, some of what we know, but at the same time talking about a lot of the uh, um, terms that you should know in the sense of value types uh, and value constraints. So anyways, guys, uh, that's it for the video. And I appreciate y'all appreciate sticking around. And I will see you in the next one. Stay tuned.